Hi there. Uh, welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on Chapter 3. We're looking at trigonometric functions. And what we'll be concentrating on in this lesson is how you sketch graphs of sine, cos, tan, sec, cosec, and cot. Now, being able to make a quick sketch, and I do mean a very quick sketch, of trigonometric functions, it is very useful for doing uh, a variety of types of trig questions, in particular solving equations. To make a sketch, uh, surprisingly little needs to be remembered. You need to know the general shape of the curve. You need to know the value of the function. You need to remember this at x equals zero, what's sine zero, what's cos zero, what's tan zero. You need to remember that sine and cosine both have a maximum of plus one and a minimum of minus one, and they oscillate between those two values. And this is important. A significant point on the curve is reached every 90 degrees. Remember that value. Every 90 degrees, something happens. Sine and cos repeat every 360 degrees, uh, or in technical language, they have a period of 360 degrees. And tan repeats every 180 degrees. It's got a period of 180. OK, we'll have a look at sine x first of all. And we'll go through those uh, six steps in doing the sketch. The first thing is knowing the general shape of the curve. So you need to know what sine x looks like. Well, it looks a bit like that. Second thing you need to know is the value of the function at x equals 0. Well, the sine of 0 is 0. That's something you need to learn. That means if I put in axes, the curve will begin there in the middle at zero. The sine of zero is zero. Sine and cos both have a maximum of plus and minus one, so I can put those on the sketch, plus one at the top, minus one at the bottom. A significant point is reached every 90 degrees. Now what that means is this, we start at zero, the maximum is a significant point, that'll be at 90. The crossing point there, 180. The minimum, 270. The crossing point there, 360. And so on and so on and so on. Something significant happens every 90 degrees. That's a very useful thing to remember. They repeat every 360, which means they've got a period of 360 degrees. And you can see it goes through one complete cycle from 0 to 360. And then it repeats again and repeats again, going in both directions. So that would be, I think, four complete cycles of sine x. OK, cos x. The general shape of the curve is identical to sine x. Cos curve, sine curve, they have the same general shape. However, this is different. The value of the function at x equals 0, well, the cosine of 0 is 1. What that means is this. When you're sketching the curve, it's going to have to start up there at 1 on the y-axis. Uh, both sine and cos have a maximum of plus and minus one, so I can put those onto the axes. A significant point reached every 90 degrees, like with sine, crossing point at 90, a minimum 180, crossing point 270, maximum at 360, and it repeats every 360 degrees. So again, I think that is four complete cycles of cos x. Tan x is the odd one out. It does look a little bit different. Its general shape uh, is a bit more strange. It will look something like that. Now, that angle slightly misleading there. It would be about 45 degrees in reality. The value of the function at x equals 0, same as sine. Tan of 0 is 0. So putting in the axes, like sine, it begins there at 0. Now, a significant point is reached every 90 degrees. For tan, those significant points are either crossing points or asymptotes. So 90 degrees after the crossing point, there's an asymptote where the curve stretches up towards infinity. And 90 degrees before zero, there's an asymptote where the curve stretches down towards minus infinity. Um, it repeats every 180 degrees rather than 360. I mean, it does repeat every 360, but it repeats more frequently than that. So every 180 degrees, you just get exactly the same pattern 
repeating again and again and again in both directions. So, quick reminder of what we did there. Uh, surprising little needs to be remembered to do a trig curve. You need to know the general shape of the curve. You need to know the value of the function at x equals zero. And for sine, the sine of zero is zero, the tan of zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one. That's the odd one out. Sine and cos both have a maximum of one and a minimum of minus one. A significant point is reached every 90 degrees for all three functions. That is true. Sine and cos have a period of 360 degrees and tan has a period of 180 degrees. Okay, an exercise for you to do. And this is really worthwhile doing. Just quickly try and make for yourself a sketch of sine x, a sketch of cos x, and a sketch of tan x. Going back as far as minus 360 and forward as far as plus 360. Pause the video while you do that and then return to me when you're ready. Okay, um, this is something that is worth becoming very good at, uh, doing very quick sketches, a sine, cos, and tan, to just show these key points. So here's sine x from minus 360 to plus 360, starts at zero, goes up to one, goes down to minus one. Something significant happens every 90 degrees. Cos x, very similar, except it starts at one. Um, and again, something significant happens every 90 degrees. Tan x is the slightly strange one where you get this sort of shape and that angle there is about 45 degrees. Um, the gradient would be one if you worked it out. From minus 90 to plus 90 and then you have little 180 degree repetitions of that. Okay. That again is the graph of y equals cos x. It's a little bit flat because of, uh, I've changed the scale on the axes, but same as before. We've been considering sec x, cosec, and cot x. Well, given that sec x is one divided by cosine of x, have a go at sketching y equals sec x on the same graph as that. So quickly make a copy of that and see if you can work out what sec x will look at by doing one divided by the y values for cos x. Pause the video, come back when you think you've done it. Okay, we'll have a look at this. Now I think the first thing I would do is draw those two asymptotes. Um, because at minus 90 and plus 90, cosine of x is equal to zero. Cos minus 90 is zero, cos plus 90 is zero. That means sec is one divided by zero at those two points. Uh, one divided by zero is undefined. If you're ever dividing by zero on a graph, you will get an asymptote and the curve will approach that asymptote, but never meet it and certainly never cross it. That would be the first thing. I think the second thing that I would probably do is consider one of the easier points, which is here, where y equals one, where cos is one. One divided by one is one. So both curves will meet at that point. Um, cos x gradually gets smaller and smaller, less than one. One divided by a number less than one gradually gets bigger and bigger. So the curve's gonna head up in this direction and head up in that direction. Something similar happens for minus one. One divided by minus one is minus one. So the curves are going to touch each other there as well. Um, and in this case, again, something very similar happens. Cos x gradually gets smaller as you move in this direction, heading towards zero. One divided by a number less than one or less than minus one gradually gets bigger and bigger as a negative number. So the curve's gonna head down in that direction on the left-hand side down in that direction on the right hand side. And as you head towards the asymptotes, the value is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger because you've got one divided by a smaller and smaller number. And you'll end up with a curve that looks something like that. So y equals sec x would have that sort of shape to it. It's got asymptotes and uh, 
comes in different separate sections. Now, bearing that in mind, have a go yourself at extending that in both directions. So you don't need to draw y equals cos x like I did. Just do the red curve, uh, extend it towards the left, extend it towards the right for minus 720 degrees to plus 720 degrees. Pause the video while you're doing that and then come back when you're ready. Okay, we'll have a look at this. So this is really showing a, a much larger part of the, the graph y equals sec x, the function y equals sec x. And what you will get is something like that if you're going from minus 70 up to plus 720. You just get these separate loops repeating again and again and again, um, like sine, like cos. It's got a period of 360 degrees. Um, and then it just repeats itself again and again. Okay, example three. Y equals sine x is basically the same as y equals cos x, except it shifted 90 degrees to the right. Now, cosec and sec are just the reciprocals of those functions, so exactly the same thing happens. Cosec x is a translation of y equals sec x, by 90 degrees to the right. So this function is gonna shift 90 degrees to the right. Have a go at sketching it yourself. So try and sketch y equal cosec x, minus 720 to plus 720. Bearing in mind it'll be the same as this, but translated 90 degrees to the right. Have a go, pause the video, come back when you're ready. Okay, if we shift that 90 degrees to the right, or if we translate it 90 degrees to the right, that is what it'll look like. Everything moves 90 degrees rightwards. So the asymptotes move 90 degrees to the right, the curves move 90 degrees to the right. And that's what y equals cosec x looks like. Very similar to, to sec x, which is what you'd expect, because sine and cosine are very similar to each other. We'll now try and do the same thing with tan x. So that shows the graph of tan x for minus 720 to plus 720. Have a go. Cod x is one divided by tan x. See if you can work out what effect that will have on this. So try and sketch y equals cod x for the same domain as we've used there, from minus 720 to plus 720. Bearing in mind you'll be doing one divided by all of these values. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. Okay, the significant points are probably these crossing points on the axis because tan x equals zero at those points. One divided by zero is undefined. So the asymptotes are gonna move to these crossing points on the axis. As tan x gets bigger, one divided by tan x gets smaller. As tan x gets smaller, one divided by tan x gets bigger. Now the effect of all of that is this. So y equals cot x will look a little bit like that. These asymptotes are where tan x would have equaled zero. Okay, have a go at sketching the graph of y equals one plus two sec x, and we'll go from minus 180 to plus 180. Now, if you have a more complicated function like this, the trick is to break it down into stages. So first of all, you'll need to sketch y equals sec x. We did that just now. Using what you know about transformations, then draw y equals two times sec x. And then finally, draw y equals one plus two sec x. Um, noting key points on the axes. Again, I'll let you have a go yourselves first, pause the video, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so we said we'd start off by sketching y equals sec x. Well, y equals sec x between minus 180 and plus 180 will look something like that. This crossing point here is at plus one, the crossing point there is at minus one, and that matches with what you get with sine and cos x. And asymptotes at minus 90 and plus 90. The next thing we need to do is say, how will that change if we do two sec x? 
Well, we just double all of the Y values. Now, that'll move the graph upwards, it'll move the graph downwards beneath the axis. And the way you'll be able to see that is by these crossing points, or this single crossing point here, really, and the maximums there. So 2 sec x should look like that. The crossing point moves up to plus 2, and these maximums move down to minus 2. Next thing we need to do is add 2 to the whole function. Adding 2 to the whole function moves everything up by 2. So these three separate loops, all of them will move up by 2. And the thing to keep an eye on are the maximum points, which were at minus 2, this minimum that was at plus 2. Once we've added on 2 to the whole function, the minimum's gone up to plus 4. And these maximums have gone up so that they just touch the x-axis and then uh, they would be heading back down after that. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 52 and have a go at exercise 3B. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.